we used to do services. So this is how much SEO costs. This is how much AdWords costs, et cetera. Now we scrap that and it's just 3K flat. 3K flat to work with us and we do SEO AdWords, social call tracking, recording, high level implementation, SMS recalls, all that kind of stuff. That's the system. If you have a vision for the agency you want to build, then we want to help you build it. Welcome to the Agency Hour podcast brought to you by Agency Mavericks. Hey, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Welcome back to another episode of the Agency Hour podcast, live here from the city of Melbourne, the greatest city in the world. And I can say that because I've traveled a fair bit and seen a fair bit of the world, and I actually believe this is the greatest place on earth. I was explaining that to Oscar last night. I said, buddy, you had no idea how lucky you are being born in Melbourne. Uh, Now, little change in uh, programming here. We usually live stream this podcast episode onto the Into the Digital Mavericks Facebook group. However, we're having some problems streaming into groups at the moment. I don't know what's going on, but Zuckerberg and his minions have made it more difficult for us to live stream into the group at the moment. So we are now, and also we had this conversation a couple of weeks ago where we decided this podcast is just too good to just restrict it restrict the live stream to the members of our group. So we've decided to stream this onto our Facebook page from now on. So Agency Mavericks, if you just go to facebook.com and search for the Agency Mavericks page, we will be live streaming this uh, podcast onto the Facebook page. And at some point in the near future, once Max is back from parental leave, yes, that's right, Max has had a baby. Well, his wife had a baby, little girl called Polly. Hey, Max, hope you're watching. G'day, hope you're adjusting to fatherhood, okay? Uh, when he's back, we're going to live stream this onto our Facebook page and our YouTube channel at the same time. That's just way too complicated for me to figure out. So I need Max to do that when he comes back, which will happen in the next couple of weeks. So stay tuned for that. Now, for those of you who are in the group, don't despair because we are going to be running a very special live stream in the group every week just for our group members, which will be more of a how-to tips and tricks and tutorials to help Uh, web design and digital agency owners grow their revenue, their team and their profit so they can live more life. So that will be exclusive content for our group. And if you're listening to this podcast or watching this and you're not in the group, then you should definitely join the Digital Mavericks Facebook group. Just go to facebook.com and search for the Digital Mavericks group. All right. So we've got that out of the way. Also, we're using a brand new platform called Restream and we have no idea. Oh, here we go. It looks like it's working uh, uh, here we go. James Murgatroyd says, woohoo. There we go. Look at that. It works. The comments work. So we've ditched StreamYard because frankly, we just couldn't get it to work for, um, in our Facebook group. And so we have pivoted over to Restream, which, uh, we really like. And this is the first time we're using Restream. So what could possibly go wrong? And I'm flying solo because Max is not here. So, Hey, on today's episode, we are going to be talking to one of our Mavericks Club mastermind members, who has got a niche digital marketing agency in a particular niche that we're going to talk about. Uh, He's going to share his story with us, uh, all the trials and tribulations, the successes and the struggles of which there are plenty. It's not all rainbows and unicorns. So ladies and gentlemen, to keep things real and tell us how it is, please welcome from Sydney, Australia, Nicholas Dogillon. Hey, Nicholas, how are you, brother? Hey, mate. Very well yourself? Excellent. I'm very excited to have you on the show here, mate. Thanks for having me on it. For those that uh, for those that have n- have no idea who you are, wh- who are you? Where are you from, and what do you do? Yeah, cool. Thanks, mate. So um, Nicholas Dogilin from Sydney. Well, reside in Sydney, Australia. Born Johannesburg, South Africa. Came here twenty or oh, twenty three years ago now. I think it is. My uh, I'm married with two beautiful children. Obviously, beautiful wife. Her number one. Request for me is to get my citizenship, but I feel it's the most Australian thing to do is to not get one, even though I'm very <laughs> proud to live here. <laughs> Plus, I've got Italian background, so if I ever get deported, I eat pasta and wine all day, so I'm pretty happy about that. <laughs> uh, I love it. Yeah, so, love it. so that's me there. And then, yeah. And so before before you got into what you're doing now, what was your, like you, you go through high school, you do maybe yeah. you do some kind of college or you drop out like me. What was your first gig? Yeah, cool. Good question. So um, it actually started in the IT space, IT operations space. So um, at the very young age of eight years old. So I was, um, my uncle is only 10 years older than me. um, And we were just one day playing around and, you know, as you do, and he pulled apart a computer. 
um, the old school big tower ones. And I looked at that and was like, this is amazing. This is fascinating. What's it all about? So from that day, I was all about tech, all about computers, video games, the works, you name it. So I studied IT computer school. Are you still there? I'm still here, mate. Oh, okay. It's just made me bigger. I can't see you. <laughs> That's all right. I'll come okay. back. Don't all be right. afraid. <laughs> all right, mate. I'm like, am I just talking to myself here? Yeah, I don't know. Um, I'll keep going. So yes, yeah, so I did that um, and studied IT, computer science, all of that um, throughout throughout my schooling and then went to TAFE, did um, computer science technology. Oh, sorry, uh, IT and coding. So I wanted to be a coding monkey um, and I loved it, creating cool stuff, cool shit. Um, and then to appease my parents, I decided to apply for university, going to Sydney Uni um, for a computer science degree, at which point they then told me that I need to know the theory behind coding. Anyone who does coding knows that you reuse code. They didn't like that. They wanted you to code from scratch and know the theory which I was in, I'm out, um, you know, I don't do the coding side. And luckily at the time, my, our family friend um, offered me a job um, in his environmental software company doing web development and IT support and support. So it was him and I in a office, probably no bigger than like three by three meters. So it's like a tiny little thing, right? Um, and he's my mentor, still my mentor to, to this day, um, told me everything I know and we grew that to... 50 staff across three countries, and they actually recently now just sold to um, Microsoft. Wow. So it's a big one. And uh, what ended up happening, which I still regret part of it today, is there was one point where I was speaking to my entrepreneurial mates, and I thought, you got to leave, you got to do your own thing, you got to do this. I'm like, no, no, I've got a good job. I automated everything as you do. Um, so I had everything done by 10 a.m. when I got in at 9. And I'm like, why am I sticking around here till 5? Or why am I not getting paid for this? So I approached him and I said, listen, I want a pay rise. I want a 20K pay rise. I mean, who in their right mind says that? And he said to me, and I still remember it, he goes, you're not ready for that just yet. you still got lots to learn. Hmm. I was an egotistical son of a bitch at the time because I'm, <laughs> um, I was at the time doing Latin ballroom dancing. So my coach said, look, you're the best thing in the world. Your partner is this, that, the other. Gave me a huge ego, uh, which was a problem. So I said, no, nah, I'm leaving, doing my own thing. Hmm. So hired a team of Bosnians day one who can do web development. Got my first web development client. Thought I made it in the world, going to be a millionaire tomorrow. Quit. <laughs> Went into crazy debt. Two credit cards, in fact. One we're still paying off because I keep it there to keep me humble. Um, <laughs> and, uh, yeah, and then that kind of happened and then worked out of my – my commute to work was so – mind-numbingly short, which was roll out of bed desk, right? So we all, we've all we all been there. Yeah. Um, in my pyjamas trying to do sales calls, boom, 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 boom. Um, and just a digital agency. Then I jo um, joined BNI. That was the best thing for me. I was there for six years. Missed three out of six years because I'm wow. just that way inclined. And that helped us, um, you know, do our – do quite well. Got some really good partners out of that. Um and then, yeah, the rest is kind of just goes from there um, in well, terms of the agency. I want to talk about the pivot into the niche in a yeah, minute. Yeah. Let's just park okay. here at, at BNI for a second because mm. I tried – I think it – I've heard m many mixed reports around BNI. I've had an experience myself. I think it all comes down to the chapter that yeah. you're in. For those that don't know, BNI is Business Networking International. Is that what it stands for? Yeah. Yeah, and they have a breakfast every week. You basically have to go to this breakfast every week. And the deal is that you are there to refer people to the network. So you're not there to get clients. You're there to refer people into the network. And then the law of reciprocity yeah. says that those people refer clients back to you. I found the chapter that I was in for a few weeks, I bounced out pretty quickly because I found that the people there were – um, all due respect to them, but they were just basically so desperate for clients, which is why they were at BNI. And I was like, I just felt like a big fish in a little pond. And I'm like, oh, you know what? I just don't, this isn't my, my jam. So you were there for six years. How did you make it work for you? And I think this is not just BNI, but this is across any kind of networking experience, right? How did you make it work for you? And how, like you, you stayed there for six years. So obviously it was paying dividends. How did you make it work? I didn't want any single sale from it. Right. I, I went, I went in there literally going, I want to build partners. I want to build friends. I want to build a community. I want to own this thing um, in terms of being able to bring people here with the people that are in it to, you know, kind of share the love and to tell my clients, hey, do you need, you know, if, if I speak to a client, I kind of want to be the confidant and they say, oh, I'm struggling with this. I'm like, yeah, I know someone. So I want to be that guy that goes, I know someone. 
Got it. And that's kind of how it happened. And you got to be in it for at least two years in terms of a mindset before you get a single lead or proper lead. And you're right. Mm. It is the people. I was in a city chapter. It was the, it was the best, the best chapter to be in, I reckon, are the city ones because you operate with people of that sort of level. The ones in the outskirts um, aren't really doing as well as the city chapters to my, as far as I was concerned and experienced. And I visited a few of those, but the city ones are doing quite well. And I visited other chapters and then you start to know the people in other chapters. And I was the SEO seat. So everyone knew me as the SEO guy. Mm-hmm. And I would then just help. And during my you know, you do it like a, I think it was six minutes, you do a presentation, mm-hmm. all that was just value, value, value. And when it got to the referral point, I said, look, um, you know, happy to help any of you guys with your clients that you need, but we don't necessarily need to get clients at this point. Just happy to know people. Um, and I've got all the way to being, you know, membership coordinator, all that stuff. And we had a really good power group where it was a designer, um, copywriter, all of that. And we referred amongst ourselves, mm-hmm. but you're right. You know, the, what ended up happening and why I left was twofold. Number one, my wife didn't like me getting up at four o'clock or five o'clock in the morning and waking her up. So that was kind of short lived. But Mm -hmm. the second, the second one was I ended up hiring the people that I would end up referring to anyway, just Mm -hmm. naturally. And I thought, well, it's a high value seat. Um, I'm going to let someone else take it over. And because I had the approach of building a referral partnership with people and general friends, I still get all the referrals today, even though other people Mm. own that seat in there. Mm. It's still the relationship. Good one. I like it. (laughs) Hey, instead of referring people to you, I'm just going to hire you and build an empire. (laughs) Yeah, or hide similar similar role. Yeah, yeah. Um, So that kind of worked out. It does pigeonhole you though because we obviously were a full agency, full stack agency, and I just thought I did SEO because that was my seat, which was fine because then you have the conversations. But that's what it was. And I, used to, and I love networking. Like I'm very extroverted. I have to network. I have to be with people. Mm. So I'd, I'd attend many chapters. People would get to know you, um, you know, and I would just refer people left, right and center. Like I meet someone on the street. I literally would go to any networking group and I would think, okay, who in my chapter could I refer this person to? Not how am I going to get the work? Yeah, yeah. Um, Who can I refer to? And that's kind of how I grew from there. And I'm, I'm in a few networking groups now that are, um, I replaced early morning um, shitty coffee for late night good Shiraz and cheese boards. So that's yeah, my networking it. style. <laughs> love it. It's a great, <laughs> mind, it's a great mindset. Um, apart from BNI, how did you get your first 10 or 15 clients when you started out in the agency, when you left the corporate job yeah. and hired the team in Bosnia? How did you get your first half a dozen clients? Yeah, it was just literally calling around. So at the time I had um, a friend of mine that said, hey, I'm going to go into business I'm going to do web development. And they said that they knew someone. Um, and so they just wanted a website. And I think I built the site for $600 cost me like $700. So I was already going, <laughs> already going negative. I had no idea. Um, yeah, and, uh, and then it kind of grew, it kind of grew from there, just knowing people going into co-working spaces and all that. But it was literally being, if I didn't do BNI, I wouldn't be in business today. That's mm. how much I appreciate it. And anyone that wants to do it, I, I always recommend it from that perspective. And it teaches you about business. Mm. But mm. the biggest mistake I made, and it's the one thing I tell anybody getting into business now, I said, you need to have certain people in your corner before you get a single sale, before you do anything. And I don't know whether you agree with me on this or not, but you know, bookkeeper, an accountant, a coach, and a lawyer. Mm-hmm. I had none of Well, I had a lawyer. My dad's a criminal lawyer, but he was always like, no, you can't, you know, just go back into the corporate world, be safe and do all that stuff. Mm. Um, but yeah, if you don't have those, so bookkeeping wise, I had no idea we had to pay bass. I don't know what it was. Mm-hmm. I don't even any of that stuff. And I had a bookkeeper at the time when I did hire who was in the Philippines and they didn't know that Australians had to pay that. So we went into crazy debt and everything. Mm-hmm. So here I'm trying to get sales through the door and then I've got, you know, all this tax debt looming behind mm-hmm. me. So definitely had that. Um, but yeah, it kind of just grew organically from there, which is why we, um, our referral only cause I, I like it. Um, you know, there's so many out there that are running the ads and I cringe when I look at ads and things like that. So I'm like, you know what, I'll keep it to referrals. I'll build it through partner channels, one to many model and it works and it does work until it dries up mm-hmm. because then you start working on growing the business and you got, okay, well now I've got to hire people. I've got to work on systems. I've got to work on processes. Mm-hmm. And then the networking starts going down and the referrals start going down and then it's a tap that, you know, then dries out. So yeah. Totally. Hey, power tip for those who are thinking I can't afford a lawyer or an accountant. When I started, it's a true story. When I started out, 
I built a website for a, an accounting firm that was owned by a buddy of mine, basically as a contra. I was like, hey, man, I build you a website. Can you like get my shit together and get me sorted out? And I think it was like the first year of all the stuff that they did for us, they, they didn't charge me for it because I helped them with the website. And then we moved on and we found another accounting firm and I eventually hired my wife to do the bookkeeping mm -hmm. for the agency. But that was a really good way for me to get compliant, understand that I needed to pay my business activity statement, which is what Nicholas is talking about, the BAS every quarter here in Australia. If you're a company and you collect GST, I think if you're earning more than $75,000 a year in revenue, you have to declare your GST and you have to report it to the government once a quarter. That's a pain in the ass to do that. So find someone to do that. Um, find a good accountant and a good lawyer. I did the same thing with a legal firm. I, I went to a local lawyer who was a small firm. It was him and two paralegals. And I said, Hey dude, I'll help you with the website. If you help me with my contracts and my terms and conditions and my proposals and all that kind of stuff, did a little contra, uh, got set up and then eventually got to a point where I could, you know, hire a lawyer and pay them and, and help look after me. The other thing you did is it gave me some websites to put on my portfolio. Yeah. So I knew that I knew that I could do the work and I was confident that I could deliver. So I built a website for an accountant and a lawyer, instantly had two websites on my portfolio and I had all that stuff covered in the business I didn't have to worry about. Um, definitely lawyer and accountant are two of the most important people that you need to have in your corner. So when you started out, you were, by the way, if you've got any questions, ladies and gentlemen, just feel free to ask in the comments here and we'll make sure to bring them up and, uh, and Nicholas can answer them as we go throughout the show. Um, you started out as a, as a generalist kind of digital agency, right? Just helping anyone and everyone. At what, how long into your business did you decide that you needed to focus on a particular type of client? Um, when I decided I need to focus was never because it kind of happened just by the by. Um, so I've January, um, 2023 will mark 10 years in the agency. So two years in or three years in my best mate, who's a dentist, still my best mate today, um, approached me and he said, listen, the practice I'm working at really need help getting more patients and doing digital marketing. I know you run an agency. Can you help? I said, you're a dentist, man. Do you even have a website? Like, do you need marketing? I don't even know it's a thing. He's like, yeah, it is. So went in and <laughs> didn't do anything crazy. We just saw the website was horrible. So redid the website, did organic, um, you know, SEO, social, um, paid ads, couple of things here or there. And we took that practice in a short span of time from 20 patients a month to 90 patients a month recurring. Um, wow. And I was like, wow, this works. And they were super happy to the point where they actually had to move to a whole new location because they didn't have enough dental chairs. <laughs> so I'm like, sorry, not sorry. <laughs> and uh, then I was like, wow, this is a thing. And as you know, an entrepreneur and looking at things, I'm like, I've, I've got to make a business out of this. So connected with a few guys in the industry and ended up getting on a dental, the cover of a dental magazine for the work that we did. Um, as well as then podcasts in that, in the work, in the dental world. And, um, that just grew organically. And then the best part about working with a dental practice is one practice will refer someone, you know, 10, 20, 30 Ks away because it's not competing. So it's great. So we could do the whole referral thing. Um, and that worked, that worked really well for us. Um, and now that's all we do is dental. And the best part mm -hmm. about it is we don't have to learn a whole new industry. We don't have to know about a whole new client set. We just know, I know patients, dental patients better than the dentist probably knows a dental patient. Mm -hmm. So I talk the talk, you know, everything about it. When we do the discovery sessions with a dentist, I can basically mime them all the problems they have. I can regurgitate it before they say it. Um, you know, what sets them apart. I'll tell you exactly what they say. And then I tell them like, how they can't be that because everyone else is. Mm -hmm. um, and with my team, they just know what needs to happen. So it's kind of like Ray Kroc, the founder of McDonald's. If you've watched it, that's mm -hmm. us. So mm -hmm. dentist comes in, they know what they want. They know what they need. They go through our system, through our process. End result is that refer it in, start again, database reactivation campaigns, et cetera, um, pile it in. So we used to do um, clients outside of dental, and all our issues came from clients outside of dental mm -hmm. um, to the point of, I mean, we've got, uh, got a couple of lawsuits that came out of it because we got it wrong with ad words and things like that. But dental just, we just always nailed it. It was just, it was easy. We talked to them. We know what we had to do. And my team said, look, right now, capacity wise, we could take on probably two clients outside of dental. Not that we will, cause I've closed the doors, but dental, we could take on 10 at the capacity that we have now. Mm. And doing what we're doing would be pure revenue. 
Right, um, because, it, because it's standardised, right? It's like go to McDonald's and ask for a hot dog. They go, huh? Yeah. Uh, we, we don't yep. even have we don't even have the things. To, we don't even yep. have that shaped bun to make a yep. hot dog, right? Like they can't make you a hot dog. No. <laughs> they do what they do. It's on the menu, and if it's not on the menu, they don't do okay. it. They're going to send you down to Wendy's for a hot dog, right? Yeah. So, so that kind of worked out well because now just you know. We used to do services, so this is how much SEO costs, this is how much AdWords costs, et cetera. Now we scrap that and it's just 3K flat. 3K flat to work with us and we do SEO, AdWords, social, call tracking, recording, high-level implementation, SMS recalls, all that kind of stuff. That's the system. Whether you do all of it with us or not, it's that. Mm-hmm. Um, and the dentist knows what they're getting um, and it just and it just works. So, yeah, that kind of, um, that's how we fell in, fell quote unquote into the niche. Um, and we say, look, we handle everything from a patient, not knowing who you are through to getting them into the chair and back again, anything from the chair onwards where you're having problems with team or having problems clinically or anything is the dental coaches that we partner with and the dental people in the industry we partner mm-hmm. with that we can refer you into. They refer to us when someone needs, you know, more mm-hmm. patients or lead general, um, anything like that. So yeah, kind of um, that's it. all we do now. <clears throat> I want to talk about the price point. Obviously, that doesn't include ad spend, right? 3K a month yeah. plus ad spend on top of that. How do you know, like, and, I, and you know, I'm kind of teeing you up here because you're in Mavericks Club, you're in my squadron, we've worked closely on this. So, uh, you know, yeah, great question from Bashir. <laughs> so I do want to cover some of this stuff. What happens if a dentist comes along and says, well, w- we need a new website? Yeah. Is that, you just get it done as part of the 3K a month or is that additional scope? Now, so we used to charge 10k flat for a website with content included design development. Now it's included in the in the 3k. Mm. So we say you come on 3k 12 month contract, um, mm-hmm. and if you want the website done, it's a 24 month contract at 3k. Mm-hmm. Um, and we then say there's we our um, guarantee is you will get your money back within 90 days or full money back plus the website. Wow, and okay, we can so- guarantee it. So let, I want to unpack this for a bit. How do you, yep. like, how do you, how do you restrict what you're doing for a client? What if a client comes to you and is like, all right, Nicholas, great, three grand, three grand a month. So we need emails done. We need the new website. We need SEO. We need you to run ads. We need this. We need this. We need this. How do you keep them, how do you restrict your deliverables each month so that you're not just, you know, blowing your profit in the first 90 days. Because I imagine a cl- client's expectations are pretty high and they just want you to perform a miracle straight off the bat, right? You'd think so, but no. <laughs> so with dentists, they don't have time for any day. So put it this way, a dentist went through years of tertiary education but didn't get a single unit of business or a single unit of marketing. Right. Stressed out their brains. It's the industry with the highest suicide rate because yeah, they're so stressed. Each of yeah. their hands is insured for at least a million dollars. All they want to do is clinical work. They under the pump because DAs, which is dental assistants, hygienists and everything are scarce at the moment. So they're usually doing more jobs than they should. We come in and say, Hey, we're going to make your life easier by a taking care of all your marketing. So we're a partner as if we're sitting there on the chair next to you, going to take care of all the marketing, which means you're going to get someone in the dental chair. We're going to nurture them after the case, through SMS campaigns, email campaigns, or, or whatever the case is. Plus we're going to do the call recording, um, and we're going to listen to every single call, whether you have 20 calls or 500 and tell you what's working, what's not working, how that affects the campaigns, how we're going to change the campaigns, the sonar method that you explain in Mavericks club. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's going to then help train your staff. Mm-hmm. How does that sound? Yeah, good. Great. Okay, cool. Just focus on that. You focus on the dental stuff and we'll call you every month. We'll ask how many new patients you got, where they came from. We'll open up our system and we'll see it. So they're not, so they don't have the top, this is super interesting and this is what I predicted (laughs) you you would answer, is they don't have the time or the knowledge really to say, hey, Nicholas, why aren't we doing more email marketing? Because that's just not in their world. They're just like, I I don't, Mm -hmm. I don't, I just want patients in the chair, right? As long as patients are turning up, I don't even know that email marketing is a thing. I don't even know that SMS campaigns are a thing. I just know that dental rank handle that for us and patients are turning up in the chair and I'm happy. That's correct. And I say to them, I'm like, listen, put yourself outside of the dental world. How many times do you want to receive an email from your dentist? And they're like, not very many. And they're like, well, we have to do an email every month, maybe twice a month. I'm like, you do it once a quarter maximum, leave it at that in terms of what's new, who's new in the practice and services, things like that, we handle it. But the turning point 
for us from a profitability perspective and delivery perspective was high level because we got all the snapshots built. So when a dentist comes in, it's like, great, we've built an implants, teeth whitening, general dental, um, all the cosmetic service, they all snapshots. So mm-hmm. client comes in and we say, we're doing all that, boom, snapshot, custom fields, custom values, go for gold, team handles it. We've got an onboarding team and a delivery team just doing that. Mm-hmm. Um, the team's 21 now across all all areas. But then when I do the discovery with them at the beginning and I ask the strategies, the two questions we ask, well, big questions we ask is, you know, what are the practice goals and what do you consider as success in six months, one year and three years? Mm. As long as we deliver on that, they're happy. Whether that's email marketing, whatever it is, Mm. it's that. And I can guarantee you it'll be twofold. One, patient numbers. Two, revenue. Mm -hmm. Um, And then someone bringing in an associate or expanding to new locations and while we can help with all of that. A couple of really interesting questions here from Bashir and Joel. Let's deal with Bashir first is... Uh, how do you sell to someone who just wants, like they just turn up and say, we just need Google ads. Like we just want you to manage our ads. Yep. Good question. So ideally we get them into the three K package and say that we'll do ads for that. And then they've got to add ad spend on top of that. We Mm -hmm. know generally the answer to that is now that's too expensive to do it. So we can do just the Google ads for them if they want to. And we charge that at eight fifty um, X GST flat rate and then ad spend minimum two K. Mm-hmm. but they'll soon realize that they can't do just the ads mm-hmm. because then when we get there um, and we say, yeah, great, we got them. Um, we can't put them in the funnel or we can't do any of that stuff because you don't have that package or that component with us. So you're really wasting money by just doing, doing ads because where are they going? Mm-hmm. What are you doing? You're not mm-hmm. retargeting. You're not SMS recall. You're not doing any of the call tracking. So it's very rare that they'll just continue doing ads Mm-hmm. with us and we explain mm-hmm. to them that this is what it looks like. It's like and we explain it in their world. So it's like me coming in, you know that someone needs a full mouth restoration, but all they want to come in for is a general clean. You're like, mm-hmm. great, we can do the general clean, but ultimately you're going to have to do this because there's mm-hmm. problems that we see or foresee happening. You still look like a dragon. You've just got clean <laughs> yeah, Exactly. <laughs> right. And that's how we explain the package too. It's kind of like right. saying, look, you have to floss. And just like yeah. someone has to floss, you have to be on our dental rank, you know, patient acquisition nurse, nurse system. That's just how it works. <laughs> so, so this is interesting because the, what, so what we talk about, I'll come back to Joel's question in a second. What we, and by the way, if anyone's interested in trialing high level, which is what Nicholas is talking about, it's a fantastic piece of software that allows you to manage marketing and sales for clients. It also allows you to resell it as a software, so it's great for sticky recurring revenue. Sean Clark, the CEO of High Level, was at Mavcon in San Diego and spoke. Those guys are just absolute rock stars. We love them. They're great partners. Um, You normally get a 14-day trial with High Level. If you sign up through our link, you do get a 30-day trial. There's also a snapshot based on our sales system that you can install, and yes, we do get affiliate income if you sign up with our link. It's gohighlevel.com slash Troy Dean. I'll come back to Joel's question in a minute, but I want to talk about the the ads. So what we talk about in Mavericks Club is this concept of having kind of entry-level products, right? We call them accelerators or fire starters. And the idea is that if you're selling ads to someone, they will soon realize that there's a new problem that they need to solve, which is, hey, we're getting all this traffic to the website. We might be getting people to sign up. But now we're not doing follow-up. We're not SMSing them. We're not capturing, we're not nurturing them. They're not actually converting. We're we're doing your ads and we're getting a good return on ad spend, but we're also missing out on all this other stuff because you haven't pulled the trigger on it. And so if you can prove yourself and prove your value by just doing the, the kind of the wedge product, which is the first accelerator, then it's a pretty easy, natural conversation. And they will actually say, hey, you guys are really good. What else can you help us with? I'm glad you asked. We can do client reactivation campaigns. We can do SMS nurturing. We can do all this other stuff. We can listen to your call recordings. And then it's a natural progression to get them onto the 3K a month program, right? Correct. And even before they become a client, um, I know we should do it. Uh, You you know how you keep saying do paid discovery. Mm. Um, The thing is with dentists, they are affluent people. They're very rich people generally, but they will not pay a cent for anything. So we mm-hmm. give our discovery away for free. Sure. So we do a two hour discovery. We do a full web and marketing audit for them. It takes me um, probably 10 minutes to do. Mm-hmm. Um, and then obviously do the discovery with them. But through that, they see the value. And I'm like, look, mm-hmm. if I give you this 
stuff for free and I know your practice to this detail for mm. free. Could you imagine what happens? You give me three grand a month. Mm, totally. Like, oh, yeah. Okay. It's a, it's yeah, a it's brand. And we get in there and we show them and then we do do that. We say, look, here's your ads. Here's your ad spend. Here's your return on ad spend. All these people that we've got in here that won't convert because a lot of them are, you know, cosmetic um, leads and they will mm-hmm. convert maybe in three months, four months, but they mm-hmm. won't because we're not mm-hmm. doing any other campaign for you. Yeah. And we're listening to the calls, but we can't do anything with it. So it's mm-hmm. very quick that they start seeing that. And yeah. our guarantee goes out the window if you only do one thing with us. Yeah, perfect. Love it. I want to come back to talk about the guarantee in a second. But just on the paid discovery thing though, I do want to mm-hmm. clarify, um, you because you know your audience so well, I had this conversation with our team recently I reckon I could run a sales call with someone, with an agency owner, where they didn't talk. Yeah. I could tell them all their problems. I could tell them exactly what they want. I could paint the picture of a desired future for them. I could tell them why they're not already there, the roadblocks that are getting in their way, where they're stuck and exactly what they need help with. And they would just sit there and go, yep, yeah, exactly right. Because I've mm-hmm. done thousands of these calls over the last 10 years and I know them better than they know themselves. I don't even need them to talk. I know exactly what their problems are, right? So in that case, paid discovery makes no sense for us at all because so we do free discovery. Essentially, we have a start for free campaign where people come in, they join Sales Accelerator or Mavericks Club. The first 14 days is free because after 14 days, they're like, holy shit, you guys clearly have a plan for this. You know this better than I do because we've been doing it for so long, right? So in that case, it makes sense to do free discovery because it takes you 10 minutes, right? Because you, you can do it in your sleep because you've been doing it for so long. And also every client's basically the same. They are. Right? They say they're not, but they are. <laughs> no. yeah. We are not. You're not a unique and beautiful <laughs> snowflake. You're exactly the same as every other frigging dentist. You want the same thing. Yeah. You've got the same problems. We can fix it. Just yeah. get out of our way and let us do our thing. Um, I'll come back to Joel's question in a minute, Joel, I promise. Uh, talk to me about the guarantee. How do you, like, that's ballsy, it's brilliant. <laughs> it's brilliant. So yeah, the way, the way that it works, you know, we used to do it just so, so you'd pay. So we, we looked at it and we we're like, okay, if a client comes on now, chances are the website is atrocious, but they want you to do ads. And when you get more patients, they want to rank on Google. So then we would spend time doing the website. We would spend time doing the content. We would run a couple of ads. We wouldn't get anywhere. Client would get frustrated within 90 days. All right. General dental, usually getting someone on in the chair, sorry, the service for general, general dental, like check up and clean something ranges from 175 to 250, depending on where the clinic is. So you'd have to get a lot of those mm. to make, make the money back. Right. Mm. Mm-hmm. Implants, um, Invisalign way better. That's like minimum four grand, five grand, mm-hmm. um, you know, total, um, Redoing the smile could be anywhere north of 20, 30, 40 grand for a smile makeover, something like that. So that's where it is. Mm-hmm. So what we decided to do is say, okay, come in, 12 month contract, 3K pop. In the first six weeks, we will have a new website for you with content and design. Mm-hmm. All right. So, you, and there's an asterisk and it says content and design. But as part of that, you need to work with us on the content when we need it. And we've got to get it by a certain amount of time. And you've got to prove things in a certain amount of time. Mm-hmm. While that all happens, we are starting on your SEO and we know what needs to happen. So we're doing local SEO, technical SEO and mm-hmm. getting the blogs ready. Mm-hmm. And then we're doing database reactivation. So in the first 90 days of database reactivation, you put a minimum of 100K back into their bank account mm-hmm. because it's through the ones, the leads are never really converted on the high cosmetic side. Mm-hmm. So really 90 days in, they've made their whole one year plus, mm-hmm. two years sometimes, back mm-hmm. with us with ad spend. Mm-hmm. There's a no brainer to continue. You've got a brand mm-hmm. new website. You got this. And the ones that we've got in before now come straight back into it again. So is there, a, is there a type of dentist that would turn up that you would say, we can't offer you that guarantee because, you know, you're just starting out. You have no database that we can do a reactivation campaign. But what's the criteria for you to go, look, sorry, the guarantee doesn't apply to you. Yeah. So during discovery, I ask certain questions, which is what is your current turnover? What is your current profit? Mm. And what is your goal? For both of those, how many team do you have? Do you have a team member on your side that we can work with? And how big is your list? We need all that. If we get all that, then when we go through those questions, then ask, where do you want to be in six months, one year, all of that. And when we present the system, we say, this is what it's going to look like for you. And this is what a perfect fit for us looks like. So if they don't fit that, we explain it to them. 
Mm-hmm. And it might not just be the guarantee, but we go through the same process. Mm-hmm. Meaning, look, yours might be a little bit longer, but this is what you're going to get at the end of it. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So they, they end up, it ends up working for them regardless. Um, and mm-hmm. then we implement, once you implement the high level chat on there and start doing that side of things. And that happens a lot quicker. In fact, I demoed one yesterday to a new partner. I said, Oh, let's look at one for an existing client. And as I demoed it, someone used the chat and asked how much, you know, small makeover was. And I'm like, there you go. This is how it works. Love <laughs> so it. It was great. Love it. Uh, my, my team are going to kill me for this, but yeah. we're about to roll out a guarantee for sales accelerator. I can hear Emily screaming at me going, <laughs> no! no. It's, well, not live yet. it's not live yet. I'm not, I'm not sure when we're rolling it out, but we're about to roll out a, a guarantee for Team Accelerator, which is basically... Um, for Team Accelerator or Sales sorry, Accelerator? Sorry, Sales Accelerator. Uh, so come in, go through Sales Accelerator. We guarantee you'll make 30K in the 90 days, 30K of new revenue. It's Sorry, in the four months. It's a four-month program. Uh, 90, uh, 30K in the in the four months. Otherwise, we'll keep working with you for free until you do. That's wow. our guarantee. Um, and uh, <laughs> Are you selling $99 care plans or are you selling websites at 10K? <laughs> uh, you won't be selling $99 care plans. <laughs> and it'll, it'll be based on a criteria that you have to fit to meet that, the criteria to, to, to qualify for the guarantee. And then yep. you basically have to do everything that we tell you to yeah, that's exactly how it's the guarantee, right? Yeah, they, um, that, that's how the good guarantees work. <laughs> yeah, Emily, Emily and Anna are screaming at me, no! <laughs> um, uh, Joel, Warren has a question, and the question is this. So, Do you ever engage dentists that are bigger already and not actually in the patient's mouth? Do they have different expectations because they have more time? So maybe they have, maybe they're just a business owner, they're not working in the business. How do you deal with them? Yeah, great question. So 95% of the time we work with dentists that want to get new patients through the door. The other 5% of the time we we work with practices who just want to be the best and be everywhere and want to expand to new locations. Mm. So when we work with those ones, it's about exposure. So the KPI no longer becomes new patients. The, The KPI becomes traffic and becomes exposure and how wide of an area we get that exposure and then how soon, based off what we're doing there, can we get them to the new location? So... Yeah, great question. Love it. Same methodology, right? It's just a exactly. different. It's same methodology. It's just a different. Like it's it's like some of our mavericks who are not working in the business at all anymore. I we basically have the same conversation with them. They just delegate it to team members, or they just managing yeah. their team to get everything done. Yeah, love it. Um, ha, uh, talk to me about your team. Yeah, so we got to. I want to. I want to dive into where <laughs> things go wrong, Nicholas. <laughs> Mate, you open a can of worms here. <laughs> Um, so, okay, right how long do we have? No, geez. Okay, so I'll put it in a context for you. Um, we fired 14 Sydney staff last September. My wife was nine months, uh, not nine months pregnant, seven months pregnant. She's like, what the bleep are you doing? Wow. I'm like, no, people, there was toxicity within the team, which happened to come from my first employee. Um, and then people just thought they were better than us. And I went into my team huddles. Um, and I went into my Friday, you know, informal team chat and I felt that there was just nothing. It was toxic environment. Um, and with some of the contractors, if we didn't pay them on time, they cracked it. But if they didn't deliver on time, there was excuses under the sun. So literally got everyone in on a Friday and said, guys, nothing for you here Monday, um, 14. And then on the Tuesday, rehired three and then hired in Philippines. And now we've got 21 team wow. members just hiring another one through, um, team accelerator for a project manager. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, it kind of saved us a quarter of a million in payroll, which is amazing. Um, but it also, um, created freedom for me because the team now fully engaged, love what they're doing technically just as brilliant, if not better. Mm-hmm. Um, the hardest thing, um, was actually how do I transition my Sydney team talking to clients, to my Philippines team to clients. And mm. it was Matt Jones that convinced me actually. He's like, they don't care, mate. I'm like, oh, okay. Well, that's all I need to hear. And I spoke to the client and I said, listen, here's your option. You can either have me working on your account that I know like the back of my hand and it'll take me minimum 96 hours to get back to you. Or you can work with my Philippines team who know it like the back of their hand and it'll take them less than 12 to get back to you and get things done. Which do you prefer? Mm. So we did that. And then the person we hired as customer success is actually a dentist. Um, huh. she's Filipino, but she's a dentist uh-huh. and her parents are dentists. So she knows dentistry. 
That's smart. So, yeah, we try and hire dentists. <laughs> so my content writers, some of the dentists, um, technical guys have worked in the dental field. And then obviously I know dental at the back of my hand. So we do training modules uh, basically fortnightly on all things dental. That's great. A couple of things I want to unpack here. One, uh, Nicholas has mentioned Team Accelerator. For those that don't know, that is a done. We have a training called Team Accelerator Blueprint. By the way, all of our courses are on sale right now, 50% off because someone lost their mind in the company and put all of our, <laughs> it wasn't me, someone put all our courses on sale for 50% off. So go to our website, check it out. Uh, someone will put the link in the chat here. We have a course called Team Accelerator Blueprint, which is our entire recruitment process for hiring and onboarding team members. We also have a done for you recruitment process for our Mavericks Club members, of which Nicholas is one of them, and we actually recruit team members from our talent pool in the Philippines. So that's what Nicholas is talking about there. And the other thing he mentioned is that Matt Jones convinced him just to get his Filipino staff talking to his clients. Matt is one of our Mavericks Club members, and Matt serves tradies. And And Matt's like, dude, like my Philippine staff talk to my tradie clients all the time and they just don't give a shit. And I think it's a like you you call Telstra or Vodafone <laughs> or the bank or like anyone these days and you're talking to a call centre somewhere and a lot of those call centres are in Manila. They're in a place called Fort Bonifacio, which is where all the big companies have – it's like the Beverly Hills of, of the Philippines and it's where all the – it's where Facebook and Google and uh, and Twitter have their social media moderating moderating call centers, and uh, it's kind of set up for that kind of infrastructure. And at the end of the day, clients actually don't give a shit who they talk to as long as they get an outcome, right? They only it only becomes a problem when they have to talk to multiple people and explain the same story over and over again, and they still don't get an outcome. That's when it becomes a problem. And I've had plenty of conversations with Australian based staff who are clueless right? Europe car, I'm looking at you. Uh, so, um, you know, um, so just wanted to clarify a couple of things there and there we go. Here's the link. Sorry, I do need to put this in here. Otherwise I'll get fired. Here is the link here. Agencymavericks.com slash scale your agency sale. Every one of our courses is on sale for 50% off until midnight Saturday night, I think. So, uh, go and check it out. Um, now, um, so the team, what is the team make up at the moment? Like who's on the team? Are they marketers, developers, copywriters? Just kind of walk us through that. Yeah, so um, we follow EOS Entrepreneur Operating um, System. So through that model, so I'm um, the visionary. Obviously, I suck at tasks. I'm um, mm-hmm. Put me in sales, put me in partnerships. That's me and the big idea. So it's me. Then we have Belle, who's in Queensland. She's one of the early employees that we got back. Um, mm-hmm. She's our ops manager slash um, implementer. Mm-hmm. Then we've got um, Charmaine and Camille who are customer success team and onboarding team. So there's two of them. Then we're hiring project manager through you, but Charmaine's there at the moment. Um, and then we've got SEO team lead and SEO associate, social media um, team lead and two associates, AdWords team lead and associate, and then a high level implementer who also does blogs. And then we work with... Um, Carl Taylor um, and his business to help us in the back end with um, scaling that very quickly and efficiently when needed. So we've got the full team um, and their biggest request to me every single day is please stay out of teamwork slash click up because you mm. waste our time just stick on sales. Yeah. So totally. that's, that's where we plan. That's where the team is. And quite honestly, a client asked me a question and I have to go ask the team. Like yeah. that's the point where it's gone to. Yeah. Good. That's exactly where it should be. By the way, Carl Taylor, uh, his business is Automation Agency. Agency. Big shout out to Carl. He's a legend. He's just a Mm. fantastic human being. And uh, him and I have been trying to connect on a call for about six months now. And I do apologize, Carl. We will get there. (laughs) Automation Agency. Go check out uh, Carl Taylor's business. He's built a really great business over there. Um, So your role, apart from uh, so your role now in the business is sales and partnerships. When a client, you're yeah. still closing deals, so you're closing a dentist, you close the deal. What happens, walk us through the mechanics of what happens when you close a deal. What happens then? Yeah, cool. So, yeah, so have the proposal meeting with the client. They say, yep, happy to go ahead, no worries. They sign Proposify. Um, I then jump on a call and say, hey, it's amazing. So you come on board. The next step here is um, Camille's going to reach out to you. who will be your point of contact and she'll get you set up. Um, and that's what it is. And then Camille will go and give them a call, organize the onboarding meeting. We send them, um, what they need to fill in. We get the documents they need to get. And then it's literally high level implementation, set them up on now click up used to be teamwork. 
get everything there and then it's straight in just goes for gold and then i talk to them randomly within the next 90 days not on 90 days but randomly so every quarter and who runs the kind of monthly or fortnightly status update calls with those clients? Camille. So Camille does that. Um, right. I jump in at the beginning when she started just so that we can transition over or see how he wanted to run. But that's where it's always failed with previous account managers is like, Nick, we can't do it the way that you do it or be who you are. And I'm like, well, I've been doing it for 10 years and it's my business. Put your own spin on it, but they never could. Mm-hmm. So we build a process around it. And I just recorded every single session and Camille had to come in and watch every single session. And that's what we do. And we just review it. So we used to do an analysis every single month. Now we just do an analysis every quarter and the, mm-hmm. and the months within it are just reporting on mm-hmm. what the objective was for that quarter. Mm-hmm. So she runs through that. She asks what their patient numbers were that month. We then open up high level and show the opportunities that are in there um, for what service we go through the call recording and we give the feedback on that. And then we say what the objective is for the next quarter, aligning it to that six months, one year, three year goal. And then we usually adjust the one year and three year goal, depending on where we are in the cycle. Mm. And then I'll randomly call or pop in depending where they are. If I'm traveling interstate, like, Hey, lovely to see you guys, you know, how's it going? How's the team going? You happy? So every team members obviously got their scorecard and KPI. Camille's is obviously, um, client happiness rating. Um, mm-hmm. project management is, you know, meeting deadlines and not being overdue and then so all that stuff's already in check. Mm-hmm. Um, and that's how it works. And then we have a team status call every Tuesday where we go through, um, a scorecard across the business, mm-hmm. um, and report on that. And then I will check in with my ops manager because, they all used to come to me, whereas now it goes up project management ops and then comes to me if I really need to answer something. Mm-hmm. And I'll still be involved in high level because I love, I'm like you, I'm kind of like moved to product now because I want to mm. just implement cool shit. So mm. that's what I'm working on. So my day is literally working till usually 2.30, 3 p.m. So 9 till 3, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, in technically in the business mm-hmm. calls, stuff like that. And Fridays is team or finance meetings and then working on ideas. And then Monday is either family time or working on other stuff because that's just my zone of brilliance, yeah, really. Love it. Love it. <clears throat> um, similar to my schedule, I don't pretty much – Mondays I've got no commitments. I can kind of do what I like yeah. Mondays. I think a lot Mondays. I kind of play around and experiment with stuff. Uh, Tuesday to Friday morning, I'm kind of on usually sort of eight to one. Mm. Sometimes earlier, like this Friday, I've got a 6 a.m. call with a partner in the States because it's time zones, man. So like, what do you do? You get out of bed and you take the call because that's what you do, right? Yeah. And then after one o'clock, Tuesday to Friday, I'm, you know, I'm, just goofing off really. I mean, I might be, I'm faffing about, I'm just experimenting. I might go and play some golf. I might play some yeah. guitar or do some exercise, whatever. Um, yeah. The team's got a, across the team, the overall team scorecard, the number's two. So I have to have two hours every week thinking time. Great. Undisturbed. Love two. It. And play yeah. golf, you know, once a month. That That's on there too, but I don't hit that one very often. Yeah. Um, I just want to talk about customer service people again because yeah. the, the, I think there is a mindset that someone who doesn't live in my country, wherever you are, US, Canada, UK, whatever, I'm in the UK, all my clients are in the UK, I need to have a customer service person in the UK talking to them, right? I will say this, we have hired many agencies and consultancies over the years and the best client call, client service status update meeting I have ever had by far and away, I know Emily is going to know what I'm about to say, is the guys from, um, I can't remember what they were called now, the chat girls that used to work for us. They were based in Columbia. I can't remember the name of the company. But anyway, they used to manage all of our social media. They were based in Columbia. Those girls were rock stars. Every time we got on a call with them, it was it was like, this is the best structured client update meeting I've ever had. And they know exactly what they're doing. I, um, um, made Omni, they were called. Yeah. And, um, and they were based in Columbia. The guy that owned the company was based in San Diego. And, uh, I, I used to get off those calls and go, Jesus, how do we make, like, how do we do status updates that good? Because they're, they're unbelievable. And mm. they were just rock stars at it. So I think the it's, it's ignorant to believe that the people that live in your country 
are going to be the best to serve your clients, even though your clients are in the same country. Like you're just restricting your talent pool to the local people. And I would rather find the best people regardless of where they live, right? I think that's just a, a um, yeah. I think it's a fear thing that your clients are going to say, well, why am I talking to someone in Colombia if you're based in Australia and I'm in Australia? It's like, well, it doesn't fucking matter. Like you're getting an outcome, you're getting the result. Who cares, right? Yeah. Don't limit talent by geography. Exactly. Don't limit the talent by geography. Exactly. Um, what are you most excited about over the next 90 days in the business? Getting getting the project manager through Team Accelerator, one. But um, also we've got some really good partner meetings coming on with project management software and some AI that's coming out in this space. And we're going to partner with them to help because they complement what we do. So as much as we patient generation, they are part of the patient engagement and patient experience. Hmm. So partnering with them. So that's where I'm really piling all my effort into. Um, and then also um, winding back a lot more on the day-to-day stuff that I'm still needed in, which is kind of like the high level stuff or a couple of residual questions from existing clients that Camille and Charmaine are still having. Mm. But once that happens, then that's what I'm excited about. Yeah. That's pretty epic. And what are you most frustrated by? What's the, what's the, if you could wave a magic wand, what's the one thing that you'd like to fix? Great. It's a loaded question. Um, probably, you know what, to, to be perfectly honest, it's probably my mentality on things. So obviously I've got a three year old and an eight month old, mm. um, and my wife and, and, you know, I used to have it's interesting, uh, prior to meeting my wife, my goal was a hundred million. Then I met my wife and she said, if you want dinner at five o'clock, you better be home by five. So it's 50 million. <laughs> then I had a firstborn and I'm like, 20 million is good. I had my second born and it's 10 million. And I'm like, you know what? I only have to work till two. So I <laughs> told my wife, there's no three or four because then I'm basically, you know, yeah, working right. for nothing. <laughs> Don't let um, them outnumber you. Don't let your kids outnumber the parents, man. Yeah. It's a bad idea. <laughs> oh, no. So it's that frustration um, level that I can't work as crazy as I once did. But then I thought about it. And I'm like, what's more important? I remember Mark Boris once saying, he said that if uh, someone asked him, if you look back on life, what's the one thing he regrets or would change? And he said, spending more time with his kids. And I'm like, mm. we'll make money. I can make money tomorrow, you mm. know, or next week or something, but I can't get that time back with my kids. So I'm like, how do I maximize what I'm doing now and efficient now? If I only work two hours in a day, what do I need to do in those two hours to maximize it, to get the same result? And on my desktop, I've got a, thing here says, is this worth a thousand dollars, a thousand dollars an hour? And if the answer is no, then who has to do it? Yeah. So the team knows that's, that's just how it is. And I can bring in sales, um, you know, call, call myself the patient whisperer, but you know, on Mm -hmm. the same token, it's bringing in the dentist. So if we have to do that, but it's, yeah, it's just mentally like waking up, you know, early mornings and all that, or, you know, making sure that exercise mentally, all that stuff, that's the frustration because then it leads back down into the team and they see it. I'm going to, uh, just uh, explain something to you that's kind of gone off in my head recently, and this is a result of going to the states, going to WordCamp US, and and having MavCon, right? And I'm so I'm going to impart some uh, ideas that could be worth a hundred million dollars, Nicholas. Thank you. Uh, what I've realised is that you don't. What what I've realised is that the leverage, that the, 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 the possibility is that there's leverage in actually being a shareholder in multiple businesses, right? Now, I actually yeah. think you are primed to offer the right, if you come across a dentist who is looking to scale and exit, what if I was you, what I would be doing is I would be saying, look, our usual fee is, you know, for your type of business is inflated, say it's normally six grand, whatever. I'm happy to do it for 3K. I'll also coach you through helping to grow the business, but I want some equity. So we'll, mm. we'll do it for 3K. I'll take some equity if you know that they actually have a real chance of exiting. Because yep. what I've realized is that you don't have to sell your own business to become a multimillionaire. You can actually be involved in, and this came from a lot of conversations at WordCamp US of people that have, and in the States, it's a completely different world, man, because there is so much money in the States. Go, and I'll tell you why, because... There is, there's a lot of equity, a lot of private money in the States that is looking for somewhere to invest. They're not investing in property. They're not investing in shares. They're not investing in foreign exchange because of what's happened with COVID and everything's risky now. What they're investing in is business, right? Mm. So there is, there's lots of acquisitions happening, tons of acquisitions happening, and there's lots of opportunities 
to help someone grow their business and exit and just take a percentage. And you, with your experience of understanding what it takes to scale a dental practice, I think there's an opportunity to have a conversation with some dentists and say, hey, give me some equity, I'll help you scale and exit. And then when they do exit, you, you have payday, right? Totally. I mean, because it's the generational thing. So right now there's the dentists that are in their 60s, 70s, some older than that, that are looking to sell the practice mm-hmm. um, who have no idea how to how to do that. And sure, there's agencies out there that help with that or dental coaches that help with it, but you always need the marketing. And when they sell their book, they retain person that buys the book usually retains probably maximum about 50% of that book. So you have to build the other 50% for them. So yeah, we could do that and, and look at how that works. So I think you know, I'll be having a few more chats about that. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. I said to my wife this morning about um, playing the long game and, uh, and she's like, you know, it's a long game, isn't it? And I said, well, it, it's a generational game. I'm playing the kind of game, which means my kids won't have to worry about buying a house. Mm. Uh, that's the game I'm playing. It's like, I'm, I just turned 49 and I think I'm just getting started. Like I've got I've, Sweet. some Good. days it's like, fuck, I'm running out of life, man. I'm almost 50. Yeah. And other <laughs> days it's like, I still feel like I'm 22. I wish it's I was good. in mm. some ways knowing what I know now um, because there's plenty of opportunity in front of us and I'm playing the game, which means Oscar and Goldie, you know, if all goes well, they will never have to worry about buying a house or anything because I'm going to, I'm playing the, the, I'm playing the generational game. You know, I'm not playing the short, I'm not playing the short game. The way it should hey, be. This, is, this has been super helpful, dude. This has been super fun hanging awesome. out. Um, thank you. Uh, how do people get in touch if they want to reach out and say thank you for this? Yeah, cool. The easiest is just on LinkedIn. I'm the only Nicholas Dogulin in the whole world. So if you can spell my surname right, you'll probably find me. Um, I'm usually on there quite a bit. Um, so that would be the best one. Obviously, if they're a maverick, I'm in Slack all the time too. Um, so, yeah. And happy to chat about anything, give away anything. For, you know, I just I just love giving value. I don't care what comes my way as long as I can help someone else. You help one person, probably help the world. So Yeah, exactly. And the law of reciprocity is true, yeah. man. It's like it, it, yeah. it, it just – Time and time again, the more you give, the more you raise your network, the more it comes back to you from from channels that you don't expect it to. I, I, I know that if you put effort into adding value, that value comes back to you from from ways that you go, wow, I didn't I wasn't expecting that, but it, it is it is energetic for sure. Well, it's and live on, on one last thing is like I know we've been we were talking about hundred million, we're talking about that, and I've always been focused revenue, 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 but changed our mindset recently um, with our mission being wanting to put 500,000 smiles back into the world, right? And when we focus mm-hmm. on that, it's changed it completely because now it's like, right. well, revenue will come with it, but let's do this. Let's focus on the smiles, yeah. which is, you know, uh, vicariously through the through the dental practices. So mm-hmm. then ultimately my higher mission in life, which I didn't get to, but focusing on that has changed a lot of things that was in the business. Yeah, because you put 500,000 smiles back into the world and the revenue will look after itself, right? I know I know what that number is, but the focus is the 500,000. Yeah. Um, and the team's on board for it. The practices obviously are on board for it. Um, and it's in all our messaging and everything that we re- we're working now to launch next year. Love it. Love it. Nicholas Dogulin from Dentoring. Thank, Thank you so much for being a part of the agency, our brother. Appreciate you. Thanks, man. I love all you guys. Man. Ciao. Take Bye. care. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that is another episode of The Agency Hour. Hey, how did Restream work? I think it went pretty well. Let us know in the comments how this was compared to StreamYard. Let us know how it was being on the page versus in the group. As I said, if you're in the group, don't despair. We have some exclusive content coming your way. We're going to be doing a weekly live stream to help you guys level up and take your agency to the next level so you can live more life. Um, leave us some comments, also subscribe to the podcast and uh, share it with your friends and all that kind of good stuff. Do all all the things, like, share, subscribe, right? And we will see you next week on The Agency. I don't know when Max is back, but I'm hoping he's back soon because there's too many buttons here to push. So uh, Max, looking forward to having you back, brother. You are missed. All right, we will see you next week on The Agency Hour. Until then, I'm Troy Dean. Have a great day. Bye for now. Thanks for listening to The Agency Hour podcast. Subscribe at Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Pocket Cast, Audible, and wherever you like to listen. You can catch all of the Agency Hour episodes on our YouTube channel at youtube.com slash agency mavericks. Or you can get involved. Check out our free Digital Mavericks Facebook group, where we broadcast these episodes live for our community every week, along with a ton of free training. We'll see you there.